Mr. Speaker. And Mr. Speaker, at the outset, I want to congratulate the member for Schaulberg Saint Charles for her leadership in tabling this bill in this place today. Um, the colleague who spoke before, yes, he has raised a litany of issues on gender par parity that have yet to be addressed by either Conservative or Liberal government in the past. So I'm looking forward in a couple of years from now when the New Democrats take control of government, we will be able to address these matters from the House of Commons. And uh, I would point out, Mr. Speaker, that given the uh, large proportion of women in this chamber represented by our party, we can have full confidence that uh, the government will also be represented by a lot of women, including the cabinet. Um, Mr. Speaker, it's important to uh, point out that uh, my colleague has tabled a bill addressing a clear power of the government, and that is in their power to make appointments to Crown corporations. And I, I think that uh, this bill is very laudatory because what she is doing is saying that government should lead by example. Uh, we had the notation in the budget 2012 where the government simply encouraged uh, private corporate boards to uh, include more Canadian women, and that was good business sense. But take no measures themselves to increase the number of women on the boards that they control the appointments to. Now, of course, the members still will remember that uh, the government of the day made great promises for open, transparent, participatory government and tabled their accountability bill. Well, what they have not delivered on, and which they struck down without, frankly, striking down the payment, for many years their appointment secretariat continued to have budgeted millions of dollars where they, in fact, did no business. And so there is no clear mechanism where members of parliament can come forward on appointments to make recommendations uh, encouraging that uh, the names of more women come forward. The only time that members of parliament can do that is when the speaker uh, refers the matter of appointments to committees and if in the wisdom of the committee they decide that they will address that matter. It's always after the fact, it's after the uh, government has already decided who they're bringing forward as appointments. So I uh, fully congratulate my colleague for her very progressive step, which is very clearly based on uh, the information she's provided to the House today in keeping with other G8 nations. And uh, we should, of course, turn to the G8 nations when they are taking uh, uh, more democratic measures to represent the interests of all Canadians. Now, I think, uh, Mr. Speaker, also that the bill is very wise because it does not recommend that we immediately uh, provide uh, parity on all Crown corporations for men and women. Uh, there's a very phased increase, which is reasonable over time. One of the most important uh, reasons, Mr. Speaker, for actually imposing quotas, there was opposition by the government member speaker against quotas that somehow that's saying that women have to have a quota or they'll never get appointed, which is an absurd statement. One of the reasons why governments turn to quotas is because governments have not voluntarily gone in that direction. And we know for, from, uh, from past experience, whether it's a private uh, corporate board or whether it's a crown corporation, once you're appointed to one board, then you're seen as credible, and then you're appointed to other boards. And one need, merely need to look at the Globe and Mail each day and see who's being appointed. And you'll see that they, they list the long list of boards that this new appointee has been appointed to. So at what point in time can women get an equal foot in the door? Well, at some point in time, the governments have to take certain measures. And I think that the measure that my honorable colleague has brought forward is a very reasonable one and it is in keeping with precedents set by other uh, countries around the world. Now, let's simply look, Mr. Speaker, at what is the record. I think that my colleague, in fact, was very fair and reasonable in doing an averaging of the number of women appointed to Crown corporations. I believe that she said 27%. Uh, I think what the Library of Parliament has said is far less than that, less than 20%. But let's look at the actual boards. Atomic Energy of Canada, how many women? Zero. We look at the National Energy Board, 20%. Bank of Canada, 23% women. Canada Post Corporation, well, we know a lot of posties are women. 
I think that they probably have the direct experience. They could potentially sit on the board, good business managers, 18%. CBC, well, I think both men and women listen to the radio. I think they can offer sage advice on what would make for good public programming, 33% only for women. Standards Council of Canada, well, women nowadays have all kinds of backgrounds and credentials that they could offer for establishing uh, uh, common standards for the country, a mere 27%. Now, Mr. Speaker, we might be able to defend that there no, is no necessity for quotas. We might be able to defend that um, there are so few women few women on our crown corporations because they're not educated, they don't have the credentials. In my university, in my alma mater, University of Alberta, enrollment in the Alberta Business School, MBA, 42% women. I think maybe that's an indication that there are women of high caliber. University faculty of Alberta Faculty of Law, percentage of women enrolled has been a consistent 48 to 51% since the year 2000. And I can fully attest, Mr. Speaker, that each year the women are in the highest percentage of marks graduating from those law schools. So it's clearly not a matter of women not having the credentials. Well, maybe they graduate uh, from university and they don't go on to actually have any practical experience. Well, Mr. Speaker, I took the time to take a look at the membership in the law societies across our country. So what is the percentage of insured uh, members of the bar in Alberta? Almost 50%. Almost 2,000 women registered practicing insured members of the bar society. In uh, Ontario, uh, almost 7,000 women practicing members of the bar. Well, let's look a little bit more deeply, okay? So maybe they're just new entrants. Maybe this is a new phenomenon that women have decided to enter the professions. Maybe they have the qualifications to actually serve on, on Crown Corporations. Well, we look at uh, practicing members of the bar uh, in Alberta for 16 to 20 years, 573. In Ontario, 2,200 women. Let's look at 26 years, 26 years and more of women who have practiced at the bar. Uh, women in Alberta, over 700. In Ontario, more than 2,400. So is it a situation where women don't have the qualifications, they don't have the experience? One simply raises the question, why is it that this government is, in its wisdom cannot seem to find any qualified women to appoint to their crown corporations? One of the mechanisms to use that have been used around, around the world is the use of establishing quotas. And as my colleague uh, very validly pointed out, um, around the world, various countries have uh, chosen mechanisms to uh, make appointments. And many of them have chosen specific quotas. I am deeply troubled Mr. Speaker, in hearing the comment across the way um, by the member responsible for the status of women, in suggesting that because my colleague has tabled a bill recommending that there be quotas, that therefore she does not believe, the member does not believe that women are qualified. Nothing can be further from the truth. The very uh, reason that she has stayed in this house, why she feels it necessary to bring forward this bill is, is because there are so many qualified women in this country who are being given short shrift by this government. And I think in finally, in closing, Mr. Speaker, the most important point is um, the comment made by um, the government member about the fact that, well, these are standalone boards. The government has nothing to do with them. It is this government that chooses who to appoint to every Crown Corporation in this country, every federal Crown Corporation. They are the ones who, are, who make those very choices. And so in their wisdom, they have decided that they will not look to um, our Chambers of Commerce, to our places of business, to our uh, small businesses, to our large corporations, to women who are in management, uh, to look for women who might be able to serve. And it has been suggested by the United Nations in a review a few years back 
that it would serve democracy better around the world if the governments would move to in ensure greater uh, gender parity in all institutions of government. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, please. Resuming debate, the honorable member for Argenteuil, Papineau, Mirabel. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I think that my colleague for Edmonton, Strathcona, addressed many important points in this debate, but it's also a pleasure for me to be here to talk about this issue. To begin, I would like to congratulate and thank my colleague for Charlebourg Haute Saint Charles for her work and for this bill and also for all the work she's done on this bill, and not only for women in Quebec and Canada, but for all women, period. She does outstanding work, and I'm proud to say she is my colleague. Bill C-473 aims for parity when it comes to the representation of men and women on the boards of Crown corporations, and it would seek to achieve this parity within six years. After so many years, the challenges in terms of equality are still there in our society. And so it's important to mention the progress which has been made so far in this area. However, we would be remiss to think that this matter has been settled and that there's nothing more we can do to advance parity. Now, in the workplace and elsewhere, women see that there is still inequality, be it in terms of compensation or in terms of uh, how work is parceled out. Women still do s about 70 percent, or rather still earn about 70 percent of what men make, and often the work done by women or rather women also do most of the work at home, raising kids and in the household, and this of course affects uh, parity in our society as a whole. Women represent over half of the population, but they are far from representing half of all members on uh, boards of directors in the private sector or in politics. Here in the House of Commons, about a quarter of parliamentarians or MPs are women, and it's about the same in the provinces and municipalities. Even though there are more female premiers in Canada today, it does not mean that the number of women in departments has increased at the same pace. In fact, there's still a lot of work to be done. At the National Assembly in Quebec, 32.8% of uh, MPPs were women. However, at the NDP, 40% of MPs are women, and we're very proud of this. I myself am very proud to be the chair of the Women's Committee of our party. My colleagues are fantastic women, and we're proud to be here in the House. The reason we were able to get 40% of women is because of all the work we did in Quebec. We worked hard at recruiting female candidates and we encouraged them to enter politics. However, there's still much work to be done if we are to better represent women. As my colleague from Edmonton said, when we will be the government, I am sure that the number of women elected will still be high. And uh, who knows, maybe we will even reach parity at that point. So when you have more women in politics, it really changes the way politics is done. Now, of the 84 Crown Corporations in Canada, 16 of the 16 heads of these organizations are women, which represents only 9%. And most recent statistics show that of all people who are senior managers in Crown corporations and major entities across Canada, well, women are underrepresented. They only represent 27% of senior management positions. Only 24% of senior management positions in Quebec are held by women and 16% on boards of directors. Mr. Speaker, I dream of the day 
when men and women are perfectly equal, equally represented on boards, in public life, in fact, throughout society, throughout life, be it in the private sector and the public sector. And I dream of the day when true parity will make a difference in the lives of men, women, and all Canadians and Quebecers. Now, as a female politician, it's my duty to support my female colleagues, to help propel them towards their towards fulfilling their potential. And really, within the NDP, uh, NDP female MPs feel it is our duty to show the women around us that nothing is impossible, that they don't set any limit to themselves, they can achieve their loftiest goals, and we all have to work together, together to ensure that there are more female senior officials and more female politicians. We have to show women that this is possible, but there are not enough role models at this point. Uh, for instance, chartered accountants, about a quarter of them are women, and there should be more. So often women um, don't have role models in areas where they would like to work. So, so women who are in these areas have to step up to the plate. Because when you give women the power to do what they want, it can make a difference in community to the benefit of everyone. Now, the first step we can take, Mr. Speaker, to achieve this goal, and in fact, we're talking about a huge step and when my grandmother was my age, already at that time, women were talking about achieving equality. But what we can do right now is to support this bill. She is uh, proposing the following parameters. Uh, a target of 30% of women in the second year following the coming into force of this section. A target of 40% of women four years after the coming into force of the bill. And a target of 50% of women following the coming into force of this section. So as my colleague from Edmonton, Strathcona said, this would be a staggered approach. So after six years, we would reach parity. This type of legislative measure would, would force Crown Corporations to widen the pool of candidates from which to choose. And they would also uh, have to turn to non-traditional uh, recruitment pools because women, of course, there aren't as many women in positions of power, so so we'd have to find qualified women who work in other sectors, in more non-traditional sectors. For instance, nurses, teachers, nursing and teaching. These fields are still dominated by women. They do an outstanding job. And, and they are qualified. However, often recruiters don't look to these areas to recruit women. They'll turn to more traditional sectors like the law. So women are often involved at the community level. Um, and so, again, when we're seeking to recruit higher level uh, people for higher level positions, we have to turn to areas which are non-traditional. And by recruiting more women, we can change the way decisions are made. It's also important to note that this bill would not, does not apply to um, companies, corporations, banks, or listed companies. So really, the bill would only apply to Crown Corporations. We at the NDP sincerely believe that supporting this bill would help all women become more equal, and it's the responsibility of the government to promote this. The government should lead by example, by hiring more women to manage its public finances in a way as to better represent the Canadian population. And by setting the example, the government might will pave the way for private sector companies who in turn might hire more women. So, and it's been shown that Companies who have more women on their boards have a competitive edge. So as long as there aren't the same number of women on boards, we will never reach true equality. 
if you have a diversified board, it makes for better governance. And that's why we have to keep parity top of mind. And this will help not only Crown corporations, but all of society. Quick, I'll be quick, Mr. Speaker. Many, or rather several countries have taken measures to reach this parity. Um, Quebec, for instance, has done so as well. It's very important because these quotas, when they are applied, show society that it is an important question. So to conclude, we in the NDP are determined to fight against any form of discrimination against women. And I believe that this bill is a really good um, example of how we can achieve parity between men and women and, and, and that it is very important. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.